you guys, it's Cadme here from Bitten Apple TV here at Urban Action Showcase Expo. And oh my god, is that journey with through the northern wind with Edmund Paul? Oh my god, that was I know I'm a little corny, I know. I'm here with the artist Sketch. Uh, you wanna you wanna explain the name Sketch? Um, yeah. and was it sketchy when you met him? I just uh, there's so many questions I have. It's, uh, it was Sketch of Tron. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things related to Sketch. But I got the name when I was a when I was a kid, like six, uh, it started out as Etch a Sketch. And then as I got older it just was Sketch. So I've been drawing since I was a kid. So but what's your real name though? Uh, my real name is Shamel. Didn't see that coming. I will admit I was like Sketch that sounds like an awesome brand name. I love that. Um, now Journey Through the Northern Wind, uh, tell me about it. Well, Journey Through the Northern Wind is a children's book series based on my daughters. They play as characters in this children's book series. Sad that they're, that they're not here today, but um, at the next event they will be here. And um, it's based on two daughters of mine, and they go out on a journey searching for their father. What kind of mischief do they get into? Because now I'm just curious, because kids are the greatest inspirations for everything. Well, it's, th this particular book here is educational, so they, it's, at the end of the book, it's lessons you have learned from the book, which um, I don't want to let you know everything now, but... It's okay, tell me what you can. It's based on, like, they come across, they go through a dark forest, they come across creatures, ghouls, goblins, and more. And you got the little mushroom friends that, that's on my hat, they help the kids on their journey. Like the minions, for, for you know, but they're mushrooms. I love that. <laughs> Um, now, in regards to like as an artist, um, I can draw really good stick figures. Um, those are self-portraits, and I'm really good at that. Um, drawing like a graphic novel and then drawing a children's book is not—it's not the same um, kind of style. And you have to make sure that you you bring it to life enough that kids are drawn to it as well as adults, and then it doesn't cross the line. So for you, with your uh, your history in art, how did you? I get. I have a daughter too and I have a lot of nieces and nephews but the biggest thing is making everything clear and relatable and tone down the depression like don't make everything so dark and ominous it has to be kind of like straightforward and dangerous but not like unhealthy danger more like oh if I just turn left it's not that big of a deal you know what I mean so for kids you don't want to make everything so disastrous we don't like in the book we never use the words weapons we just call them magical items it's important that kids understand life is more about being defensive um, and protection of yourself and your family versus attacking others and going after others like it's more important to just protect yourself but still kind of be open to listen to your elders but not every elder is for you so you know just be mindful and be defensive still so that's kind of one of the key lessons that we try to hone in on like all the stuff we learned when we were kids it's different now you know I was born in the 80s but it's different now and so we're trying to bring back more of the community raising and kids understanding where they come from so artistically I approach it kind of like when I was a kid when I thought everything was just simple and fantastic money grew on trees and if you ate a seed you'd have a whole fruit bush in your stomach and you'd never be hungry like that's the approach like learned your lesson lessons from Mikey right yeah pretty much like you know what I mean like you just want everything to seem magical but not too over the top you know what I mean? So that's that's the artistic approach I take. I'm a graphic artist, so and a fantasy artist. So doing fantasy is easy for me, and then toning it down is just literally if I if I sit in his house for like five minutes, there's so much going on with the kids. Like they just randomly start dancing and singing. So you can take a lot of that energy, and a lot of, I just use that to draw and it's a lot easier that way than trying to figure out and then he does the panels too him and my brother do the panel designs so it's easy for me to take that and then take live images and just kind of draw the energy from it and then that's how I create I, w I was not prepared for the answer but I'm glad you actually explained it to me because I have graphic novels and then I have my kid books and I'm like I know I bought the kid books I don't know why I bought them, but I'm still I'm still gonna read them. But I've never understood like I guess the artist per, uh, perception of how you would actually change it from like adult to kid and still yet be appeasing to both sides. Because um, you know the adult still has to approve to buy it um, as soon as I give my niece her stuff. 
uh, after I'm done reading it. Um, <laughs> uh, what I wanted to ask you was, how did you come up with this idea? Well, it was my kids. It was my kids. I was always a good writer. But with the story, my kids, I asked them what they want to be in. They said they wanted to be fairies. I asked them if they wanted like an animal, like a pet or some psychic of, of some what, whatever they want. And I just told my Sketchatron, a.k.a. Shamel Reed, and he just brought it to life. With his, also his brother, he's a panel designer, Steven Sievers. He's not here today, but he, he had a whole big part of this project. Okay, so what I want to ask you is, um, I guess, what sort of like antagonists do they come across um, in the story? Because every protagonist, you got someone you got to go up against. So what do you have lined up for them that they have to, like, I guess, journey through? All right, so um, actually, it starts off with two sisters. They go out on this journey. They never come back. So now the mom had to go send the other two daughters. I have a family of six. So I don't want to break the story on you and, and tell you like the whole thing, but they come across, in the first book, they come across a little girl that was crying. This little girl name was Forrest. Um, should, I, should I tell her? Well, you know, it's, it's okay because it's a teaser. So the first, well, the main antagonist is a witch through the whole story. But she has like, other things she uses to manipulate the situation so it's it's one of those situations where like i said the children have to be mindful but there's other like nuances in there like kind of like simple stuff like don't take food from strangers and things like that so the their first main main uh antagonist they come across is a witch and it happens to be a little girl they have to find out how it works out though like how she gets out of the situation how she even gets into it is crazy like i i'm a grown man i'm i'm like 37 years old and i enjoy the stories that he writes because these are all the stuff that i went through as a kid and even as adults we have to be careful with the people we let into our relationships yeah. so these are things that our parents try to tell us when we're little but we know everything because we're little and you know you're in you're grown on the inside you got it all down and then as you grow older you learn that it's we we're given a family but you also make your own but you have to be careful who you allow into your family and so that's like the the core part of it when it starts and then it snowballs into all these other adventures and every kid has their own attitude so one i have two favorite characters um the first one is funny because it's his his uh eldest daughter who when she was asked for her power she said i just want to make everything pretty and she wanted a butterfly and I laughed hard because I'm like, okay, so how are we going to turn that into a superpower? I, dude, I don't even... And he came up with a way to turn it into an actual power. And then my favorite is because I'm a fantasy artist, is one of the younger daughters who's like hot-tempered and she's real quick. So she's like the warrior of the series who's like, takes no crap from anyone and is always quick to draw her sword. But she's still a child and she still has those moments where she grabs on to stuff and if you mess with it, especially if she makes you a part of her family, she'll fight until the end to defend it. And that's how she is in real life. Like I'm like She's a warrior and a paladin rolled into one. So you gotta you guys just have a white mage with the butterflies, the other one's a paladin. Pretty much. And then like, you know, he has two younger sons and his youngest son, I would call him hyper intelligent. He's like how old now? He's three. He's three. Yeah. The, when I say the kid is hyper intelligent, like his his goal is to go to the stars. He wants to be an astronaut. He's three. He can read. Oh, honey, you can do it. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you when we created the characters, we made it so that when you read it, you can kind of identify with them. Even children, you can identify with who they are, how they function. Now, one of the cool things that he came up with a while ago was. If anyone wants to be a part of the book, anybody, they actually can. You can submit to the Facebook or anything like that. And then you submit your character, whether you want to be a hero or a villain, and he'll actually write you into the story. And you get to design your character, and I will do the design. I will send the email back to you so you can see it and get kind of a preview. And then when the story comes out, you'll be notified, and you can get it from there. Are y'all listening? Y'all could be in a book. <laughs> and, and that's coming from him and his children. Like, they, when I say they're open, and one of the things that, to, that struck me, which was kind of different, was that 
he raised his kids to not only like be mindful, but also accept others for who they are. So the idea is no matter who you are, what walk of life you're, you're in, the achievement is always there for you. Just be open to the idea. So that's where the idea of adding people in the community and just anybody who comes across it, they can always be a part of it no matter who they are. I have to say, I adore this and I love the fact that people can contact you and like, hey, can I be in your book? And that's pretty, that's pretty wicked and awesome. Um, for those who are like, obviously, I'm going to be one of those <clears throat> submissions. Uh, <laughs> um, where can people come find your book? Where can, because um, that, that artwork is like, it's super cute and I really love it. You're doing a great job. Um, where can people come find you guys? It's available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, um, Walmart. Um, our online store is at www.northernwindproductions.com. And anything else that's coming out, you could go right to our website. Um, Instagram, northernwind95. Northern Win 82, Facebook, Edmund Paul. And, uh, as far as art submissions go, you can hit up uh, Sketchman 5000. So it's literally S K E T C H M A N 5000. And you can DM me and send me images, and because we're part of the same company. So if you send me something, I will forward it to the writer, and he will write it in. And so we do this on a regular basis. I just want you to know, you said Sketchman 5000, I pictured a factory of like different ones and I'm like, oh, we have the upgrade, the ultimate upgrade. Like, <laughs> Pretty much. But he's the one that actually got me into illustrating this book. I had created like a bunch of horror short stories that's geared more toward adults. And I've been tattooing since I was like... Okay, so you were terrorizing kids. He was trying to provide... <laughs> to help them. So, so then he like... I, I kid you not, um, I was showing him like one of the stories I wrote and then the kids were running around. He literally like, we were at his mom's house, uh, me, him and my brother, and he was picking up his kids um, and it was probably like, it was late at night, it was like after 10. And um, I was showing him like some of the artwork I had and the stories that I wrote and he was like, oh, uh, I, I kind of got some stuff, you want to see it? He went to the back, came out 15 minutes later and was like, yo, you want to illustrate it? I was like, sure, why not? I thought it was like just for fun, like for his kids. And then like the next time I went to visit him, they were so stoked. And then he presented me with all this paperwork. He was like, bro, we got a company now. I made a company for children. I mean, for us to make books for kids because my kids love it. And that's literally how it snowballed. And any kid who's ever read it, they love it. Like you watch them light up. I have kids stop at the table and they look at the books and like I'm like, all right, we got to put the discount on because they want the book and I can see the look on the parent like, oh, uh, I'm out of tree with money. But, you know, we get it. So it's drawing and creating this is a lot of fun. So I invite people to my page, even if you don't want to be a part of the book and you just want a character, just do something fun, just visit. Why not? Make sure you guys check them out. I really love the fact that you guys have like real stories in there for kids to like really learn from. Because there's a lot of stuff like as a kid you just didn't know about when you, you know, your mom and dad were like, don't talk to strangers. You didn't, you understood, but you didn't quite understand. And it's just mostly because, yes, not every adult's out there to do something to you, but you do have to understand that not all of them are going to be your friend. And same thing for people who are your age. Um, you have plenty of people who will be like, hey, buddy, but they're not really for you. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's a really beautiful way that you're interested introducing it to the kids and then of course through like to me this is like an RPG so that's what's going through my head you got a warrior and a mage I'm just excited to see what else is going on there's, uh, <laughs> there's like a feral character she's like a fairy feline like a furry um, there's also like a Rasta style character um, there's uh, golems there's mud creatures Oh my god, awesome. I'm so excited for like this book. Old wise tree. Um, the mother is like almost like a fallen angel who like didn't fall in a bad way but kind of like had to be saved and went somewhere else. So that's even like her power as a fairy creature is immense. You so it's like it's very well put together. The father is a, is a fairy creature himself but on another level. Like I don't even want to tell you what it is. So you have to read the book to find out what his fairy power is and so forth and so on. So I, I just want to tell you, 
This is the best partnership I've ever seen. I have, I have done a lot of interviews, but he's the most passionate person speaking about your work. So you guys are a phenomenal team. Look, he's about to get teary eyed. <laughs> Make sure you guys check them out. They're putting together some amazing stuff. Find out what the father powers are. See what, what happened with the mom. What's, what's her real backstory? And follow the journey. Follow the journey with the kids. It was actually two showing stars. One was her sister, she landed on one side, which is the little girl named Forrest in a book. Oh. So this is like You touched up on so many things. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we, we toned it down. Like this was really, really spooky when I first drew it. And he like told me like bro, you gotta tone it down. Stop with the horror stuff, man. <laughs> so I tone it down a lot, but this is like the first book and then this is the furry that I told you about and her pet animal. I don't know if you can, guys can see that. So she's got like a caterfly. It's like a fairy cat with butterfly wings. That sounds like my cat. That's exactly what that sounds like. And the cat's name is Blue and it's really awesome. So each person has a companion. Um, hers is, this is the one that likes to make everything pretty. And if you can see that. So, and they get like set on by all these different creatures. So it's pretty dope. Yeah. You guys got to make sure you check um, check out Journey Through the Northern Wind. This is amazing. Sign up and submit your character because now I'm going to look for my characters that I <clears throat> might be submitting. Uh, <laughs> right away. Submit today. Submit <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Bye.